coming to you from 40. Does Josh know anything about what we're going on while we're filming, or is he just sitting no. out there? One I'm not walking? sure. Okay, this is called uh, the Jiu Jitsu Gypsy. Gypsy baby. They're going to travel around and film people and techniques and their stories. You know, my goal, like I, like I told him earlier, Cody, Cody, like we both have our own goals for the show and things that we want to do. But like, you know, for me, especially, it's about showing the world that Jiu Jitsu is not just a martial art. It's like a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. It's a, you know, it's a way of life. Hey, what's up? Right now we're in Kerrville, Texas. It's my home recording studio, my man cave. In about an hour, I gotta take Nick to the airport because he's gonna be training in North Carolina for about a month and a half. Unfortunately, I can't go with him right now. I have work to do here, but I'm gonna meet him back up there in about a month. We're gonna train for a week at the gym he's gonna be at, and we're gonna record it all, man. It's gonna be a blast. Um, but yeah, man, I, I gotta get going, so let's go meet Nick. Let's go take him to the airport. <laughs> What up, man? What's happening? You ready for North Carolina? Fucking okay. Alright, let's do it. Oh, yeah, I'm ready. baby almost 2018 fixing the end 2017 with a bang get the hell out of here and film fucking like crazy jiu-jitsu gypsies baby all right so i just got back from the airport nick's gone he's in north carolina he's training i'll look jealous about it i wish i was there but luckily I have the camera, so training doesn't stop, man. I'm gonna hit some areas around here, and uh, we're gonna keep doing it until I can back up with Nick. Let's go. Appalachian, North Cacalaxi, High Rock Lake. All right, baby, we made it. We're in North Carolina, chilling on High Rock Lake. It's gorgeous out here, man. It's chilly. A little, a little cold for us Texas boys, but it's pretty, man. I'm talking about this, uh, this gym and uh, Jeff. How's it been training out here? Dude, it's been fucking legit, man. He's a beast. What's Jeff like? He's a gag. He's a pretty blunt man, I'll tell you. I'll tell you how it is. Uh, his jujitsu is like spot on. He's a great man, for sure. He knows his shit. 
Ground Control, BJJ, Winston Salem, North Carolina. Jeff has a gym in um, Boone, North Carolina too. It's called, well, it's, uh, it's owned by Spencer, but he is affiliated with uh, Jeff. Who's Spencer? He's one of Jeff's purple belts. Never really rolled with anyone like your guy. I feel like in Texas, there's not a lot of wrestling, so not a lot of people come to jujitsu from wrestling. Yeah. But out here, it's like these guys are like continuous. They, you know, they wrestled their whole life, and then they run jujitsu on top of it, and they're just monsters. Man, I went to a different high school every year of high school. Four different high schools in Texas, and none of them had wrestling. It's all football. It's all football. <laughs> it's definitely all football. We're coming to North Carolina, and all these wrestlers everywhere yeah. have a strong grappling background before they even start jujitsu. I'm just drilling on the dot. Yeah, bro, let's go. So we're going to be doing this in uh, regular clothes. It's cold out here, but you can do this in a gi. If they have a car jacket on, it's winter, a hoodie, it doesn't matter. So if somebody takes you down, he ain't, he ain't probably going to be like this, because this is more like sport jujitsu. You know, he's going to be trying to come on top of you and maybe throw some throw some punches. If he does, block that, block the bison, get him on top of you, break his posture and keep him down, right? So, once you've broken his posture down and you're, you're keeping him from throwing punches, if he rears back again and maybe you have a wizard, you want to just stay on his bicep and control him. You might even be able to sweep him if you get a hook in, all right? So control his posture, start working into his collar, right? Not too deep, kind of about halfway on his throat. Pull him down into you. Lace over top with the opposite hand, and lace all the way through to the choke. Now, if you, goes for, if you go for that and he has good instincts, maybe he knows a little bit, and he starts working on this top choking hand, pushes it over, just switch. Elbows in, bring him on top of you, cross collar choke. Now this works like even if you have a t-shirt on. If you got a t-shirt on, right? Breaking their posture on the top, start grabbing the bottom of their shirt. If you grab the bottom of their shirt, grab through back into their collar and grab both. Put in the hip, change the angle. Choke right here. Same with a baseball choke. Just like a baseball bat, whatever side you're going to go on, come through and grab the, the, the hood like a baseball bat. Turn your wrist, get that blade in their throat. Right. That one's tight. So you're here, just like a baseball bat. Welcome to Thanks. the podcast for lethargic jiu-jitsu. So I'm here, hand on the hip, cup the knee, right? I'm gonna jump. Can't get it here. Can't get it here. Here. Now this is where we stop. He gets his under it. So now I can't stay here because he's gonna take my back. Okay? So I'm gonna race him back to the other side. And I want to be here, not over his arm. Okay, but if I do end up over his arm, it's on down here. Then I'm gonna attack it so he'll get it out of my way. Usually they'll just draw it into their body. You know what I'm saying? Trying to pull it and tighten up on you. All right, so then that's when I go to the other side. So here, invert. Feed it to this hand. 
feet up to this foot. Push, start uncurling my leg. I can go right to truck here. Or just push him on by, scoot pull. Here. If you do this, all right, I can't get it out. He gets his underhook. I spin. If he's here, then that's when I do this, and he'll tuck it. So I get it clear. If I'm under, that's what I really want. Okay, so then I invert, feed, feed. Got it? Got it? Yes, sir. Let's get a one, two, three. Step over, get your underhook. Can't get it, he goes belly. Now, don't ever let go of that foot. <laughs> now get your underhook. There you go. He threatens it, pulls it back. Stay tight to the hips. Push, feed it to the other hand, feed it to the other foot. Now push him by. Curl the other leg back. Scoot and pull. Scoot and pull. There you go. Body lock. Good. This is this is white belt production at best. Okay. So we got an hour and a half of this, so we're recording. Uh, let's give a little, they can edit this so we can add stuff to it. My name's Jeff Cope. I'm a first degree black belt under Marcelo Arroyo under Helion Gracie. This is Nick. He's a two stripe blue belt. Okay, let's six hand. <laughs> and then we got Cody. I've got wood. What uh, rank is Cody? I'm a two stripe blue belt. Okay, so we got two two stripe blue belts and a blue belt in the back seat. Oi. So where are we going right now? We're going to Boone, North Carolina, to my affiliate school. Let's see if we can get that in there. Boone Docks MMA, and I've got about 40 students up here, maybe 50. There'll probably be 20 here. 15 at the least. Nick was asking me earlier, hopefully I won't get upset. Uh, he's asking me about jujitsu and what it's done for me in my life. Take two. Uh, started jujitsu in August of uh, 06. So I'm like 11 and a half years into this. Okay. Right at a little over, maybe somewhere around there, close to 11 and a half years. But anyway, uh, September 09, I was at work and uh, I was on a standing in the basement of this building doing the IT electrical for this place. Been working for the company 16 years and uh, it was 25 feet from the floor I was standing on the, to the ceiling above me. And the guy was standing on the board floor above me and dropped a 2 by 10 and a hammer on top of me from. 30, 35 feet. Uh, exploded two of the discs in my back, folded my knee up underneath of me, had to have knee surgery in May of 2010 after multiple shots, nerve blocks, therapy. Uh, then I had my spine pulled apart, decompressed, a quarter inch of bone shaved out of my spine, and uh, two of my discs partially cut out of my back, two partial lumbar discectomies. I was a uh, purple belt at that time. And yes, I got my purple belt in two years and eight, two years and nine months. So, got it pretty fast, okay? And how I did that was, they hired a guy to take over teaching at our gym that I was at, the only place in town I could at the time. And uh, he won the uh, Pan Ams and was second in the world in no gi at the Worlds at his weight, which is, I think he cut down to 40 something. But anyway, I submitted him in two minutes when I was a two stripe blue belt. So I guess to keep him looking bad, he had to promote me to purple belt. Right on. Because he was like, what belt are you? That's how it happens fast. He had just won the Pan Ams and Gi in second the world in no Gi. And, and the Mundials is what it was called at the time. Now they just call it the Worlds, which is world in Portuguese, Mundial. 
But anyway, I'm trying to hold the camera from sliding off the dash because these cheap broke fuckers don't have a tripod. Like little productions. In the house, I'm just joking. I'm if you, I'm just that kind of dude. But anyway, uh, so I was pro belt at the time. They told me I was 50-50. I live a normal life. I'd never do jujitsu again. But in that aspect, I was telling him earlier, jujitsu makes everything simpler in life. So, you know, I had strong willpower, and from the adversity of jujitsu. You know, big guys on you, choking you when you're small, when you first start. You know, 110 pound dude tossing you all over the room. That's for real, when you don't know what you're doing. You know, so that gave me, you know, the ability to pre prevail, I guess, over the problem. You know, the adversity I was ahead of. So then I went to, you know, had those surgeries, lost my job. The only other thing I knew was jujitsu because all I'd ever done was electrical work. But, you know, I made black belt after that. So, just don't ever give up. But, I try not to get upset. But it changed my life because I had to, you know. But in another token, physically, jujitsu saved my life because my neck was a lot stronger than most people's from doing jujitsu, from the bridges, etc. Uh, um, so, in both aspects, physically and mentally, I think jujitsu helped save my life. And uh, Nick came to visit his grandparents in Fourth of July, 4th of July weekend. They also have a big party on the lake, and. My niece's family on the other side, not my sister, but her dad's side, are the next door neighbors to to, uh, Jeff. to Jeff. Jeff is their next door neighbor to his grandmother, which right. is my niece's uncle and aunt. So they were like, hey, you do jiu-jitsu. Got a friend named Nick coming from Texas. He'd like to do jiu-jitsu. And could he come train with you? And I said, yes. So that's how we met. Uh, I'll never forget as long as I live. This little cocky fucker told me I could do <laughs> leg locks. Because <laughs> he would do them too. So I commenced to leg locking the crap out of him, and he was like, I thought I knew leg locks till I met you. <laughs> oh, yeah. So that's how we become pretty tight. There's something about training with someone, beating the crap out of each other. As weird as it sounds, you become kind of tight. You become friends. It's a bond. I don't know how to explain it. I mean, you really bond with somebody after you fight them for real. I don't know how to explain that. Every time. Even <laughs> if it's like well, I mean, fight. if you're a decent human being, you will. If you're a dickhead, you might hold resentment and grudges, you know. But if you're a legit human being and you, you know things happen, once you fight somebody and it's over, it's like you got this bond you can't explain, you know. Yeah, I'd say that's the quickest way to get close to somebody to roll with them. Yeah, I, I would say so too because it's kind of intimate in a, in a weird well, sounding way. <laughs> well, I mean, not like sexually. <laughs> Although, no, listen not. to the 20 year olds laughing. The 40 year olds are like, yeah, you're right. Um, well, I'm the only 40 year old. Well, you know, you, you learn a lot about somebody, not, uh, I mean, shoot, regardless of the techniques and learning how long you've been training, like just, um, you know, if you're a kind person that comes through in the way you roll. Um, and, and, and the techniques you either use or don't use in a, in a friendly role up here. Uh, generous with um, what you know and share what you know. I want know. you to see the, the monk in the back seat. You know. Oh, oh no, I'm scared. You need to let go of your last early possession. <laughs> um, yes. Um, but yeah, you find out a lot about uh, about people. You know, some people, um, you tap them and they just they can't handle it. And they, a lot of those people leave Jiu Jitsu. Um, or, uh, go to gyms that are super, super competitive. That's right, 40. It gets in the way of their learning curve and, um, you know, whatever. So, I mean, yeah, it's, it just, you, it's odd by putting on a gate or putting on spats, you actually open up and uncover, you know, who you are. Stockings, you mean? The Don't you got that, some stockings, Cody? I like to say it's like, stockings. there's two kinds of people. There's, uh, there's the people that come in and get pissed off and leave. There's the people that come in and get pissed off and stay. 
the ones that come and get pissed off and stay are the ones that are completely just bettering their life every single time as they come on the mat. I believe the same. You know, they're gonna get, you're gonna get pissed off, like, but it's all about how you take it. Well, there's nothing like being, thinking you're an alpha male and being 175 pounds of muscle and walking in a room and a 115 pound kid kicking your ass. Yeah. And <laughs> I gave you a new perspective. You know what I'm saying? When that 15 year old, 115 pound kid chokes you half dead and you're a grown man, that kind of exactly. yeah. gives you a new uh, lease on life. Definitely humbling for sure. Oh yeah, very humbling. So the camera can see you. Jason, this is the head of those Watauga County SWAT team. Yep. That's it, bro. You have to do if you don't want running up in your house. <laughs> <laughs> if you roll with him, you'll know why. <laughs> He's standing going strong and fast. Yeah. Don't, don't put that one Scary on. combo. <laughs> this is the painful <laughs> aspect of Jiu Jitsu. Michael, he's going to go. Alright. Um, right. um, I want to sweep the guard. So think about it while. Zeb said maybe it's standing sweet. Uh, so think about why I'm doing this. Because usually, you know, I come and show you whatever, and then sometimes I watch you roll. This time I was too busy rolling, trying to survive there. Um, I didn't hit. He's vicious. Um, so come up with something in your head, and I'll try to address it, fix it. That way, that's usually the best way of teaching, in my opinion, sometimes. Like, come up. See the problem, see what the real problem is with a certain person, and then you can address it because sometimes they can't. Some minds aren't, you know what I'm saying? Like, they give, you give them a technique and they can run with it, but they're looking for you to give them that technique. They're not seeking it out or so. But that's my job, too. So. Um, switch from guard. Um, there's a bunch of them, wherever mine's at. Uh, any certain, just any type of guard? Hmm. What type of guard? Closed door. Okay. Uh, you gotta open it most of the time to get a good sweep. You got your hip bumps and all that stuff. If you don't have to do those, uh, you don't yeah. do Okay, so one one turn that way. Both of our camera guys are right here. Mm. So one I like, and I'm gonna show you a variation on. They call it the switch back sweep, right? So if they're down here on you, right, you can grab this and scoot out to the side. Okay, like to feed that wrist. Okay, so now if I need to because it's sitting tight, I'm gonna pull in a little bit and get one under it. Okay, now it's just like a pendulum, but I got his arm trap. So I'm gonna swing out, get him hips over my hips. Okay, now I'm gonna pull, push with this leg that way towards them, and then I'm gonna scissor this one back. Hold on to that leg till you get where you're going. Okay? Because as soon as he gets his feet on the floor, he can start squirming around. Okay? Feet. <laughs> Is that like fast enough to So when I get here, if you hang on to this, you can go straight into an arm turn. Okay? I like to suck my hands up under the shoulder. 
And as I was telling you this morning, I don't like doing my job. Two reasons you get out here, okay? He tapped me with this leg twice. He tapped me with this twice. Not like straight yeah. the leg on the side alone. You did to me. And then I lean to the side and look at him. Now I take my head towards his head. I'm barely sweeping. I just get snug and then I use my head. Okay? A little tip here. Don't eat yellow snug. <laughs> And by yellow, he means yellow. <laughs> <laughs> it took me three years to figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> this fucker talked crap to me all morning to get me to say yellow as many times as possible before I called him. <laughs> <laughs> I was from last time he came up. Wait, we talked. I can't tell my story. And he'd, he'd be like, and then I'll get to the yellow part, he'd be like, the what part? <laughs> <laughs> He was going at the podium and be like, see, he said yelling. <laughs> I was like, I say bathroom, winder. He was like, is there a bathroom? There is a What's a winder? Are you honest? Dude, I grew up in a town of about 40. <laughs> it was a backfield, three houses, a river, tobacco fields. We had, you heard this before. Is everybody ready? Now listen how good they do this. One, two, three. Why can't y'all do that? There's only two of us. He's like, he's like, where are you going? He doesn't understand it like what? Let's get it. Let's get it. Well, I mean, you got to go one way or the other. This horn is not going to be crazy. Okay. <laughs> so if I can't get this, right? He, because he's there for chill on I like to try to pull that up, and then I run fluid basically. So I turn my right shoulder, and right hip in to pinpoint that pressure. Yeah. Hey, hold on. I got one question for everybody's food. Where, what, where, what is these mountains called? Appalachian. 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 He said they said that Texas too. Wait, no, say it again. Appalachian. It's not Appalachian. It's Appalachian. These people live here. What are you going to do, gentlemen? You're wrong. It's like they said it wrong. All right, we made it. Back in the lab. Kerrville, Texas. Back in Texas, man, it was a good time. Met a lot of good grapplers and learned a shitload of good jujitsu. For sure, man. Hey, we just want to thank Ryan Morales at Fighting Chance Academy, Jeff Cope at Ground Control BJJ, and uh, Spencer Reeves at Boondocks MMA for letting us come through and film. It's an honor and pleasure, man. Thank you, guys. Yeah, we appreciate appreciate all y'all and everything that y'all have done for us. And for everybody else that's watching, if you want to get your story out there, don't hesitate to... Uh, inbox either one of us tell us your story a little bit and we'll come out to the gym it doesn't matter what state it's in we'll come anywhere so give us a holler get your story out there you just gypsies Three pieces of bacon, two eggs, hash brown, two pancakes for ten dollars. Oh yeah. Yo, I'm gonna take my next bacon, man. <clears throat> Cause I'm, it'll be able to tell it right out of the gate two things. I ain't got a lot of money. And I'm country as fuck. <laughs> I don't even have to tell her. She doesn't bring her hand. She's like, well, this motherfucker ain't got no money. And he's a goddamn redneck. So. <laughs>